This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar presenting Apple Final Cut Pro Power Tips. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. Masks allow us to select a portion of a video image. In this short video tutorial, I'll show you a variety of ways to use color, shape, and draw masks in Apple Final Cut Pro to create visual effects or fix problems. A mask selects a portion of a frame to which we apply changes. Masks can be created using shapes or colors, or we can even draw it with Bezier tools. All effects contain their own built-in masks for both shape and color. And again, we work with masks when we want to adjust something in the frame without adjusting the entire frame. Let me show you how this works. Let's start with a color mask. Another shot from Amy Catfox Campion, and these cement yellow barriers are nice, but I want to make them a bit more surreal. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's make sure we select the clip. We'll go right here. Select the clip and go up to the inspector, and this time we're going to apply hue saturation curves. How are we going to do that? We're going to select it from here and apply the hue saturation curves. See this first option called hue versus hue. This allows me to select a color and change it to any other color. Notice the eyedropper is blue. Click the eyedropper, make sure that it's blue. If it's gray, it's turned off. With a blue eyedropper, click on the color you want to select, and it's instantly highlighted here. The boundaries of that color are indicated on the left and the right side. Grab the center dot and drag it up, and you change it to pink, or blue, or perhaps green. or near red, we'll make it a, a pink barrier. And the cool thing is, I don't have to do anything. Everywhere that color occurs has now been replaced with that pink color. Isn't that neat? Now we can't keyframe this, it's not possible to keyframe, but let's say that I wanted to have a transition from pink to green. Again, I'm cutting the clip because I have to have two separate clips. Grab that dot in the new clip and make it the color that you want, and then put a transition against it. We'll make a transition and make it longer. And now we'll take a look. We've got pink, and now we've got green. Cut the clip again, and this time we'll make it blue. Oop, and then we add the transition. And the horse of a different color is a different color indeed. Another kind of a mask is a shape mask. And a typical use of the shape mask is we want to fix a color problem. And my face is a problem. <laughs> this is a trip I made a few years ago to London to attend the BVE Expo. I brought a camera, I bought a tripod, I got a great mic, and forgot to bring lights. So we've got a well-lit trade show floor and you can't see my face. I could, if I wanted to, bring up everything and make it all brighter, but I really don't want to do that. I just want to make sure people can see my face because I want to have me stand out from the background. By the way, cool tip. If you double click, it automatically resets back to a default setting. Double click the triangle. All right, so what are we going to do? Notice up here where it says color wheels. If I move to the right, there's this little icon right here. Click it and a menu shows up. This allows me to add a shape mask or a color mask. A color mask could be useful if I wanted to change the color of my shirt. But seeing as my shirt is so dark, I don't know what color it is. I'm going to apply a shape mask. Grab the mask and I can create a shape which is a circle or a rounded rectangle or square. <laughs> The square probably fits me the best, but I'm going to set this back to an oval by dragging this down and pulling this in. And let's grab this dot here and change, not that dot, let's just drag it back again. And change the angle to match the weird angle of my head. There we go. Put this just below my chin. There we are. Down a bit. Pull this in. 
The inner rectangle indicates the 100% size of the effect. The outer rectangle indicates feathering. And I want this light to feather so it has a softer look. So now what are we going to do? Well, look at my face. My face is not a highlight. It's too dark. It's not even a mid-tone. It's really kind of a shadow. So I'm going to pull the shadows up just a hair and really punch the mid mid-tones. That's not bad, except notice how gray everything is. Let's really pump the saturation to give some color here. And take the gray out by pulling the shadows down and pulling the mid-tones up until my face looks lighter. Don't need the highlights. There we go. Face looks lighter. So what I've just done is I've used a shape mask to make it look like I brought a light for my face. If I play this, except here at the beginning, I'm not there. I don't want to step into the light. That just looks like it's a mistake. What I'd rather do is I'd rather track the light. Well, there's a couple ways we can do that. One is with the effects selected, notice that there's two buttons at the top. If I click tracker, and now I track backwards. I'm going to start at the marker and go back, and it's going to follow my face as it leaves the frame. So now as I play this, notice the light tracks with me coming in. To track going forward, again, go to the marker, and this time click the forward track, and it tracks my face going forward as I shift position from side to side during my presentation. But the problem is it's changing the actual shape of the light, which I don't want to do. So if we watch the whole thing, notice that it tracks in OK. But now that light moves around, which would not be true of most lights. Normally, I would move and the light would stay still. So I think it, it looks a bit too artificial to use the track for the light. So to get rid of it, select the clip. Go to the video inspector, go all the way to the bottom, and there's trackers. I'm going to just reset the parameter, and the track disappears. Click back on shape. And let's put the shape here. Oh, it took the shape out too, didn't it? All right, we'll put that on my face. Adjust the angle. Nope, nope, adjust the angle. There we go. Fix the width right about there. Okay. So what are we going to do instead? Well, just as we can keyframe effects, we can also keyframe masks. To do that, with the clip selected, go up to the shape mask and click here. That sets a keyframe. The keyframe indicates its position. I'm going to put the playhead back at the beginning and drag the marker. And because there's already a first keyframe, it sets the second keyframe automatically. And now as I walk out, the mask tracks with me. And it'll now stay put. Notice how as I shift position, the light does not change. This is a much more believable effect to make my face light enough that you can see what I'm doing without it looking obvious that I've added a special color correction in here. So that's a shape mask and how to animate it. The third is a draw mask. A draw mask is a mask which we can actually draw. I have this lovely window here, but what I want to see in the window is a white shark. <laughs> um, the sharks are normally swimming in the air. I was watching the Korean series, The Extraordinary Attorney Wu, and there you had whales floating in all the different windows. So how do we do that? A couple ways we could do it. First, select the clip, open up the effects window, and let's look for masks. And let's look for an easy way to work. Let's do a shape mask and put the shape mask on and hide the effect. And we're going to convert this to a circle. And take this button, put it right up there. And that button, put it there. All right. Except I want the fish to appear in the window, not outside the window. So we'll invert it. And we'll feather it just a bit more, make it softer. And now as we play it, we've got the whale swimming inside that porthole. Now, if the porthole was not a real circle, 
we could create our own mask by applying a draw mask. Draw mask here. And now we'll click to set a control point. Click and drag to set a second control point. Click and drag to set a third control point. Right about there. Click again. And oh, that turned into a corner. Control click on it and set it to smooth. And then adjust the shape by dragging the control handle. And click on here and set that to smooth. And we'll adjust this by pulling this down a bit. There we go. And we'll feather this. And we'll invert it. And now, there goes our shark. The nice thing about using the draw mask is that we can create any shape that we can draw with straight lines and curves. We aren't locked into squares and rounded rectangles and ovals and circles. We can be much more flexible with that. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar presenting Apple Final Cut Pro Power Tips. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 344. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software, and we update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.